All Betty, right. Betty White Devil. Betty White Devil. What? His eye. Uh, yeah, that is. There's. It's what's, what's what's the real name? What's the uh, obviously <laughs> Betty White Devil is what you go by uh, from a like a performer uh, perspective, but um, what's your real name? Real name is David James Baker. I usually go by DJ to most people. Some people call me Dave, you know, DJ, Dave, either or. That's like the whitest name ever. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, um, in fact, um, I'm pretty sure it is, yeah, numerous times a year, the whitest name. You've won awards for the whitest name. Yeah, yeah. That and like things like uh, Trevor. Uh, no, let's see. No, there's Trevor Noah. So never mind that. Yeah. yeah. Isn't David Baker some kind of like um, UFO guy? Is that what uh, I think? Uh, Mike Baker is a Mike CIA uh, Mike operative. Baker. Who, and that's, yeah, that's coincidentally my uncle and my brother's name. Okay. I got to look this up. David Baker sounds like something I've heard before. David Baker. Uh, I think I'm like one of many in the northeastern Pennsylvania area, including my father. <laughs> this guy is an American biochemist. Oh, that's uh, uh, I thought there was more. But has anyone ever told you that you look like like some kind of celebrity? You resemble like like one. I can't. And I can't think of who it at, is. At different times, I've heard um, James Blunt. Um, yes. Or uh, there's also uh, Paul Rudd is one of them. Yes. I was gonna say uh, Paul then, Rudd meets uh, Edward Norton. Uh, nice. I'll take it. I'll take it both. There's. Uh, it's funny. One time. Oh, who's that? That singer. He he's a. I, I want to say like you know on Broadway now, but he was known for maybe doing Christian music. Um, he's like you raise me up so I can do. Well, whoever that guy was, I forget his name now, but I remember being at the Apple Store in New York City or one of the Apple stores, and this trio of what I assume to be a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter from, they had like Eastern European sounding uh, accents. And they asked me, they're like, oh, you're, and they said the guy's name. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. Because they, they looked all excited. And I was just like, I don't know. We're in New York City. No, yeah. I'm sorry. It's, I'm not him. Yeah, I have a uh... I once ran across a guy. He and I forget his name. He he's a voice in, um, The Simpsons. He was in Friends. He's played some other characters. Hank Azaria. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, I saw yeah. him in Cape May, and I couldn't think of you know who I wanted. Like, oh, you're the guy from Friends. You're the guy for the voice from whatever. And I didn't want to bother him because Cape May is like a quaint little town. It's like a beachy. It's like, and it was like off season. So like, he was just trying to enjoy, you know, time with the family. And I was like, I don't want to bother him, but I, I got to know. I got to know. And I'm like, hey, are you, are you that actor? And he just goes, nope. And he just went on his way. <laughs> and I'm like, see, he's lying to me. He's lying. That uh, was, um, that was an urge that I had to just curb real early on when I, uh, I lived in LA for a number of years. And so like when I first moved, I was living near USC. So not really celeb hub, but then uh, my friends and I, we moved to um, pretty much the thick of it. And it was an everyday occurrence where you would see someone either from film, television, music, you name it, just, you know, here at, oh, I'm at the Albertsons. And there's, you know, so and so, and like just all the time, I want to just be like, uh, "I like your shit." <laughs> <laughs> there was one time I was in Disney, and I don't know if you've ever been before, but um, and I forget what part of Disney I was in, but like the streets are pretty narrow in one of the parks, and they were having like a parade, 
and we were like getting ready to watch the parade. And I look across the street from me and there's this guy who looks exactly like Dave Matthews. And he looks at me, he sees me see him. And we spoke words without speaking words. Like he saw me look at him. Like I was like, are you who I think you are? And he looked at me, we locked eyes and he kind of just nodded like, yes, I am who you think I am. Don't bother me. <laughs> he was with his kids and his family. So I was like, okay, you know, I, I just like, I, I didn't, I didn't bother him. And the only reason I could verify it and know that it was him because someone else from NEPA was also there at the same exact time. And they didn't honor his or respect his space. They got a photo with him. So I knew for, you know, that, that, that was exactly who it was. Dave Matthews and I, uh, we spoke without speaking. Yeah, see, you 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 respected the uh, the uh, unspoken agreement, yeah, and then like, there's other people that just you know they're the main characters, so yeah. they have to uh, get their experience. Well, that was I think that was back in I want to say 2007, so that was before you know cell phones were what they are today. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine being a celebrity, um, you know with how things are it's because constant people are constantly like hey snag a picture and you know the whole open mouth like ah. yeah and, and like in my experiences like it, it when it's kind of like around here where it's like if you see like a teacher or someone you know is a doctor or whatever like okay like that's the industry like out there um yeah you would see all these people all the time and it's like oh cool <laughs> we go to the same bank. Great. <laughs> you know, like it, it's, uh, yeah, we're, we're people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, and that was the cool thing is like being able to see like, you know, again, like these people, it's like, and they're just pushing a stroller and like, Oh, they have trouble wrangling in their kids also. <laughs> Celebrities. They're just like us. <laughs> yeah. How about it? Who would have thought? Yeah. I get uh, Joey for telling a lot. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, and I want to say yeah. a lot, it's been, well over a hundred times, maybe close to two hundred times. Have you ever tried or like thought about capitalizing on it, like how, like setting up a, a photo booth or like a autograph signing? <laughs> well, see, <laughs> yeah, I, I actually I have, but I know that with my luck, I would get in trouble somehow, some way. The worst part is I was in Atlantic City. I think it was two thousand fourteen or twenty thirteen, maybe it was. Um, and he was doing something uh, for or in Atlantic City. And we actually passed him uh, in a casino. And my wife's like, there's Joey Fatone. You need to get a picture with him. And again, I was like, I'm not that guy. I'm not like, hey. Now, if, if had I had a few more drinks, I probably would have been like, yo, Joey Fatone. Like, we're, we look alike. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Weird, right? And I probably would have asked him for a photo, but I was uh, too nervous. Uh, but that would have been like my, my, my opportunity to uh, uh, get a picture side by side with well, I'm his doppelganger, I guess. Yeah, so that means I think one of you has to, I think he he has to die. I think that's how doppelgangers work. Well, let's hope if, not. I don't want him to die. If, if, if you see if you see your doppelganger, one of you got to go. Oh, well, he didn't see me. I saw him. Does that mean I die? No, he can go. Okay, Although, good. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how that law works. Yeah, I, I mean, he's he had to... he's had a good run. He's 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 done a lot. Yeah, you know, I'm still bye bye bye. Yeah, I'm I'm still on my my real slow rise. Like I just <laughs> give me give me give me like eighty more years, bud. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, joy for tone is what I get. Yeah, it's well, it's funny that uh that we all have our we all have our twins out there. Yeah, I and I I was thinking Paul Rudd, but like it wasn't like a hint of Paul Rudd, but like not like. Paul Rudd for sure. Yeah, like right now, I've I've got the hair of of Paul Rudd when he's in Wet Hot American Summer. I think if you've Speaking ever of, seen that, um, <laughs> I no, I haven't. But did you see the uh, just recently released trailer for Ghostbusters? Uh, no, you know what was that the other day or so that they just yeah. came out with it? I I I knew that it was coming up because on all like the the movie subreddits and stuff like that there is they're talking about that going to be coming out but i didn't see it just yet that's yeah i mean i'm so excited i mean i was 
a huge Ghostbusters fan when I was little. The uh, I mean Peter Venkman was was my guy. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, it's it's and it's got all the like all of them return except for I think Egon is in real life passed away. Um, yeah, yeah. But Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd. Um if we get a Winston Zedmore in there, I'm I'm in. Winston's in. Yeah, all right. Slimer makes a, a appearance. Even uh the oh what's that guy that tries to shut them down in the yeah, the first one. Oh, the EPA guy? Yeah. Uh, I just know him as Dickless. Dickless, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's in it. Um, <clears throat> the receptionist, uh, she's in it. Janine. Janine, yeah. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Nice, nice. But we're not here to yeah. talk about Ghostbusters. We're not here to talk nah. about Joey Vatone. We're not here to talk about Dave Matthews or Paul Rudd or all the famous people that are so above our heads, right? We're here to talk about Betty White Devil. Yeah. I'll tell you what. The, uh... Uh, you sent me your stuff. You just released an album just late late last year. So maybe like, what, four weeks ago, three weeks ago? Yeah, going on, yeah, maybe about a month. It, like, it, it, I did the thing where I uploaded it to like the distribution services and they're always like, oh, it could take like, you know, two weeks or so. And I was like, okay, so maybe it'll come out in January. And like, right. it came out like three days later. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's titled Uranus or Mine. <laughs> and we'll get into that. Uh, but I listened to it and I'll tell you what, it was not what I was expecting. I was expecting this real goofy type of music just based on the, the album title. Uh, but a lot of it's really good, dude. Like, uh, Thank just you. some of the, some of the tracks that kind of stood out to me, uh, without a fight, wisdom and learning, are we in love in my mind? Um, there are just a few that kind of like really caught my ear. Cool. What again, the, the music is completely not does it doesn't go along with the the title of the album. So let's talk before we get to there. Let's talk about Betty White Devil. Like I mean, let's talk about how that name occurred and talk about the the life that is Betty White Devil. And then we'll talk about the album title and and things like that. For sure. Um, so the name came about one night at the bog uh some friends and i were just goofing and just coming up with at the time what we thought would be like funny like fake album titles um so there were things like uh girth brooks was one <laughs> uh deep in thought 2001 a space thodacy um things like that um <laughs> power to the people which was actually, I, I ended up naming one of the, the tours I did last year up in New England and through the Mid-Atlantic, the Power to the People tour. Uh, <laughs> but it was just like a bunch of goof uh, album titles, um, kind of like how, you know, bands like No Effects, you know, things like uh, Heavy Petting Zoo or Blink with their, you know, Enema of the State and Take Off Your Pants and Jacket kind of things. And um, mid you know, conversation, it then like turned out to like, okay, like, oh, you yeah, like, maybe I will get back into playing music. Uh, this sounds fun. And then I'd been writing songs, you know, I mean, for forever, like, I don't think you ever really stop uh, doing things like that, in, in, at least in some small ways. And so uh, the day that Betty White passed away, uh, which I believe was New Year's Eve. I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, so I was just like, all right, that's a sign. Now or never, pulled the trigger. I got the uh, the Instagram, like the email, like the just I, I went full on with Betty White Devil. Uh, okay. And that, yeah. That's kind why, of how that started. Why Devil? Why Devil? Where did that come from? Um, The idea, I... I if I remember it well, like at least what I go by now, and I, I'm pretty sure it's it's true to what its original inception was, um, kind of like a play on 
sort of how, you know, uh, you've got Betty White, this cherished, you know, uh, figure in, in, you know, both the entertainment world and she did a lot of things for animal rights and things like that and other uh, causes. Uh, so like it. Yes. Many, rich? many causes. Okay. Yeah. I think she, I think she did at least maybe a, at least the top. Um, and, and so it was like, okay, so that's like one half. And then like, what's the complete opposite of that? It's like, well, white devil. <laughs> sort of okay. like the, uh, sort of like the, uh, the Marilyn Manson thing is like the combination of, uh, uh, Marilyn Monroe and Charles Manson, like these two just opposing ideas. And, okay. Uh, yeah. I didn't even I didn't even look at it like that. I, I didn't even look at it like Betty White and then White Devil. Yeah, and also it's just like Betty White Devil works because like imagining Betty White as like a, a devil figure is another just absurd thing too to think about. You know, that and this I, nice I, woman could just be evil. And I think she died like what, a month before her hundredth birthday too. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, like, like it's almost as if like she she did that as like the one final joke. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, you know? terrible. Yeah, we, I, you know, ninety nine. Like, I hopefully hopefully we don't we can all at least you know cross the uh, the eighty five ninety year threshold. I'd be happy with that. That'd be great. I always say like I'm 41. So I had this big, real big problem a year ago when I turned 40. Um, I'm like, well, my life is basically if, if, if God willing, I make it to 80, my life is halfway over. That's so I, I had some existential thoughts when my older brother turned 40 a couple of years ago. And um, the way I looked at it, because now like, you know, hopefully eventually I'll get there. Um, when you think about it, like maybe the first 18 years, 20 years of your life, you know, the majority of that is spent not being a full human to a certain degree, mm -hmm. uh, you know, depending on like what our situations are. But I started looking at it as like, okay, when you turn 40, you've really only been at it maybe about half that time, you know, so you're, you're, you're technically just in your 20s. I like that, but you're yeah, right. That's how you're, you're very right, though. You're right because you know those first twenty years, you're under you're under someone else's thumb, basically. Yeah, you're you're you know you've got school, you know you've got your family and parents and stuff like that. You know you you're not a like an independent entity, uh, you know, uh, until much later, and so we really can only take responsibility maybe from about I'll I'll, I'll say like maybe like. <laughs> 25 you know onward because your brain's not even completely developed i don't think until you're 25 mid 20s yeah something yeah. like that so basically we shouldn't be held accountable for anything we do from birth to 25 Should yeah, I get? yeah. <laughs> it's like no nah, it wasn't me I'm that was sorry. underdeveloped not... brain john you know uh, yeah it's like, if that was the uh is it like in, that was in beta mode? That was the mm -hmm. uh, just a test <laughs> yeah. product. Just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, you can't even you know, you can't do anything because everything lives forever on the internet. You know, I'm glad I grew up in a time where. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I can make mistakes without it being permanent. Yeah. All those yeah. you know, the early days of Facebook was awesome. Like I was at one of the first schools that had it, and uh, it was so awesome. It was like just pictures of people just getting absolutely wrecked and like, you know, like the, <laughs> the morning after photos and stuff. It was, it was something to behold. It was great. Glad that glad that none of that survived, at least that the Yeah. I was introduced to it. I was introduced to it in two thousand five. I was on spring break, my senior year of college, and we ran into this group of people. Um and like we were partying all week and they're like, Oh, do you guys have Facebook? And we're like, what the hell is Facebook? And they call like, oh, this thing. It's like a, you, know, you can stay in touch with people, but you need a, a college email for it. And I'm like, well, I have one of those. So I signed up when we got back and it was still kind of clunky. I was just like, ah, well, this is, you know, whatever. it was the Facebook back then. Was it the Facebook back then? Yeah. Yeah. And what a time. And then I kind of fell into 
MySpace a few months later. That was like my go-to. Yeah. yeah I so like... I, Go ahead. I describe uh, my music as like music for people who were into MySpace. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk more about this. Um, you know, Betty White Devil. Uh, but you also said you got back into music. Was there was there a a pre Betty White Devil? Yeah, I um, I grew up playing in in you know with groups of friends uh, or through high school. Um, one of the bands, um, my friends that I played with, um, a friend decided to to learn bass, um, and like you know we had like a band for a little bit, and then like he started playing with other bands, um, and he got really good, and he now plays. Uh, and has been playing bass uh, for the uh, the men singers. Uh, my oh, buddy okay. Eric, he uh, okay. yeah, he was yeah one of my one of my first bandmates. It is super awesome to see like all those guys like just everything that they have coming to them is absolutely deserved. Like not not a a day that I hear their music goes by like where I'm just not like thinking like, yeah, for sure. Like you guys are, you guys are awesome. <laughs> so More good. of this, please. Yeah. So good. Yeah. And everything like they don't, they, I don't think they put out anything bad. Yeah. And, and the great thing is like, I feel like because we're the similar ages and stuff, like the music and uh, we have grown with it. You know, it's, yeah. it's been awesome to see their ride. Um, So I, I, you know, played in high school bands, uh, had bands in college um, with friends uh, that we, again, like, I, I learned a lot from being uh, in bands with these guys, like learning, you know, better songwriting techniques, um, just different ways of, of looking at uh, how to construct songs. I, I totally credit my friends Josh and Carson with teaching me how to, um, you know, write better songs because I would listen to the songs they would write, and then it would I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm getting it, right. And uh, yeah, then I, I played solo for a bit, and then also with with my one of my best friends Tom, uh, he was in a couple different bands that we had together, and then we would do like you know some duo things together um but then i i got into acting um and then that brought me out west and i had my guitar and everything there and it probably would have been no big deal to like go to an open mic and kind of get myself in the scene there but like the demands of going to auditions you know every day pretty much and then you know, you work your, your your evening hours at like, I was fortunate enough where my neighborhood had everything within a couple blocks of where I needed to be. So, you know, go to auditions all day and then quick hour rest and then go into work at like a restaurant or a cafe, you know, for a shift. And, uh, but yeah, I, I was always playing and, and writing. I just, um, I never really took the chance to to get into music while out in LA just because I was so focused on, on the acting thing. And where did that go? This acting thing anywhere? Yeah, I got to, um, within, uh, my first month of being in LA, I got representation for like, you know, commercial print modeling, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then because of people I met along the way, it's, you know, it's very true that it's all about, you know, making connections and, and being friendly and personable um, because then people are willing to work with you or have you, you know, throw you a bone here and there. Um, so I got to do some fun things where I got to work with like uh, uh, Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn for some MTV promos. Um, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. That was a, a couple days because we had like, um, some rehearsal days kind of thing. And then just watching them uh, break down a script and then just basically decide like, no, we're, <laughs> we're going to, we're just going to, you know, do our thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, did some commercials appeared on like some 
you know, just quick walk on parts of like television shows that my mom watched or, uh, I, I think my favorite part of being out there, uh, doing that was when I was in a play for which the theater in LA it was kind of like this mm, at that time there was like, it's like not, I mean, it still kind of isn't as big as, you know, obviously television and movies and all that stuff. But um, I got the opportunity to be in a play uh, first. Uh, it was like for a couple weekends and then it got picked up. So where then it became a couple months um, and it was pretty cool because like, I remember meeting he came to the show to see one of the other actors in it that he's friends with, but uh, Dennis Haskins, who played Mr. Belding. Mr. Belding, yeah. Yeah, I remember beating him, and he's, like, incredibly tall. Um, I thought that was really cool. But, yeah, like, you know, things like that, you know. Uh, it, it was really interesting. Um, but then uh, after a few years, I kind of um, got the itch for something new um and so saw a couple documentaries about like a couple different jobs that like looked pretty cool like some of them were you know, sort of special operations oriented in the military and then uh so it kind of started that process a little bit and uh decided to move back to pennsylvania because i was like well if i'm going to ship out somewhere and be away for you know a couple of years doing this hopefully getting into this, this select group, um, I'd want to see my family. But then while I was home, uh, a friend of mine told me that the fire department was going to be administering their tests. And so I, uh, all the, like the people in the military that I knew or had just gotten out or a couple of these people that I'd met in the community that I was trying to join, uh, they're like, dude, yeah, firefighting, you'll have you know, so much more freedom, like to do what you want as far as vacation time and all that stuff and just being home. And, you know, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to do this. So uh, I became a firefighter in uh, 2018. Are you still a firefighter now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I got off uh, this morning, 7 a.m. So we work uh, 24 hour shifts. So I go on 7 a.m. and then I leave 7 a.m. the next day. That's amazing. Uh, part of me feels like you should change your band name. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because like, dude, when, when you when you hit me up, I'm like, this seems goofy. This seems real goofy. And uh, I'm like, I don't know. And uh, you know, it's a perfect example of never judge a book by its cover, right? So here you are, like this, you know musician and you know out and out in la and um doing acting and all this other kind of stuff and now you're a firefighter yeah like you know maybe in a couple of years i'll uh you know be a ventriloquist um and uh you know neurosurgeon <laughs> hey, <why not? laughs> although <laughs> uh, organic chemistry would probably destroy me I, I don't think i can handle that i actually um so this band foch um out in pittsburgh um a couple of those guys well they're, they're brothers and and two of them uh are still in college maybe one of them is just finishing up uh and, and they study like molecular biology and like i want to say some other like just hard science math you know uh, discipline and i'm just like cool uh, <laughs> And you guys write these awesome songs. Well, <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this whole like I I, ha I had no idea that I was going to be getting into into this with you. That's uh, you've lived um, quite a few lives, you know. Oh yeah, your, yeah. Your short time here, we'll call it short time. I don't know how old you are, but we'll call it short. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm 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 a I'm not quite, but I'm 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 C I see forty. You know, okay. down the road. Still, I see I mean, it there. Yeah, but I mean, I will call it 15 years. You know, you've done a lot in 15 years. From yeah, 25 yeah. till now. Yeah, it's been uh it's been fun. It's been interesting. I I, I feel like um anything that catches my attention, I'm gonna try and see how I could, you know, 
if you know, I'll look a little bit more into it and then see if it becomes part of, you know, my tapestry of experiences, then uh, yeah, I'll go for it. Now, all jokes aside, is are other things that you want to do or see yourself possibly doing? Um, you know, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I um, I, I'm I'm kind of dabbling in it now, but I I think at some point I think it'd be cool to uh, teach or be an instructor uh, something along the way. I I currently uh coaching track and cross country with one of my best friends uh for an area high school and so uh that's been cool to to you know kind of i mean get people into something that i'm very much into i i I ran in college and um you know did compete a little bit afterwards um and so I think it was actually also what I initially went to school to be was an English teacher. So I think at some point, I think it might be, even if it's just like substitute, you know, see, see what it's like, you know, for real. Yeah. I, uh, I, I see all kinds of walks of life throughout my, my day or week or whatever you want to call it. And I always kind of like, I see somebody uh, and I always think I, w- I wish I would have like dabbled in that or like um, I recently just started doing uh, PA announcing for Kings College men's and women's basketball. And oh, that's fast paced. Yeah. So it's not play by play, but it's like, you know, announcing fouls and substitutions. And it's a lot more than I thought right, it was going right. to be, but I, I'm having so much fun. But like, so I announced the starting lineups and I'll announce like, oh, th- this coach in his or her like, 45th year it's like holy shit like you've been coaching for 45 years and i start start thinking about like man like i wish i would have got involved like earlier in this whole like college scene or or whatever it might be because like that i mean i'm five foot nine and i'm white so basketball is just not in the cards for me but i could have like done like different routes to like stay involved and I just, I don't know if I just never thought about it or I was just kind of focused on, you know, whatever it was, girls or my job or or whatever. And I just, whatever it was that you felt was, was more, uh, you know, appealing at that time and more interesting, you know, yeah, I uh, guess it's, I just, we, we follow our interests. Yeah. I just, I, you know, I never like really thought about it. Maybe I just didn't know that those were, obviously I knew they were options. I just didn't know it was like, I don't know how to explain it. But like so many things in life that I wish I would have like entertained maybe. Like, but like you can't do everything, right? It's like weird. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer in um, if you can see it, you can be it. And so um, that's like why I, I enjoy coaching because um, I'll, I'll ask, you know, students that are looking at schools like, oh, okay, what schools are you looking at? What do you, what are you thinking about? you know, majoring in or like what areas do you think you might like to study? Um, I, it's, I'm not looking to develop, you know, Olympic athletes or anything like that. I just like to help maybe make a, a, a good impression and help people develop into more rounded individuals and kind of learn from the experience of running that you put in the time and then you see the results. Right. You no, know, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, I'm not looking as, as long as people are putting in the effort, I, I'm just looking to, you know, help people see that there are possibilities. Right. And like maybe reach their potential. Yeah. 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 I coach my son's baseball and basketball teams and he's only in kindergarten. So it's very, very low level, but like, I really enjoy that too. It's like, uh, yeah. I used to play baseball and I said, I said, I played basketball and, um, uh, you know, it, it's, I wouldn't mind continuing, uh, being a part of that, you know, even into his, you know, um, you know, junior high or whatever. I think nowadays, like these coaches are just really super smart. So I don't know if I could be smart yeah. enough where you know, the high school programs and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, so I'm, I am doing these things now. 
I guess you could say. And I wish, but I'm, you know, I'm 41. Like I said, I wish I would have done these things sooner. You're doing it right when you need to be. <laughs> <laughs> You're very kind. You see, yes, I guess, I guess so. Yeah. It's, well, cause it's like, it's, you know, um, I mean, I would go to countless auditions and, um, you know, if there's like multiple roles, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm in there and I could tell the people that are going for the same role that I am because we all look the same or have like just very similar characteristics. But then I also see the people that, okay, yeah, like they're, you know, my parents age or, or older or things like that, where it's like, oh, like for very many things, there's no cutoff age, right. you know? And so I feel like as long as you've got, you know, some, some air in your lungs, a couple of thoughts in your head and, you know, able to get out there might as well yeah i think i get in my own way in the sense like you know it, it, you don't just you can't just wake up one day and be like oh i'm gonna be a firefighter and then you go be a firefighter like it takes a lot of effort training and and things like that and it's like i don't know i don't have a lot of time in the day the way it is you know full-time job i mean this is a pure passion project so like I could, you know, maybe get rid of this, you know, and use my time differently than this. But like, I got two kids, I'm married, like I got, I got a lot going on. And everyone says, oh, you're just making excuses. But like, those things take time. You know, it's very important to, to me to be a, a good father and a good husband. And um, I would never want to not be present in those those roles. So it's you get to a point in your life where, you know, you're 41. Uh, and... It's just like not in the cards per se. Yeah, for for yeah. That that would be one of the things for sure. Firefighting <laughs> it would be a, a lot. I mean, I have friends that they were on the same list as I was. Um and you know, they they had to turn down the opportunity to go away because we, we go away, you know, for for a couple months now. Uh, it's even longer um, because they're going to come out with so many more certifications and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, friends were like, you know, they had to turn it down because, you know, well, my, my wife is, is pregnant or we just had a kid. And so, um, yeah, we shaping a, a human. I feel like, yeah, that that's like, that's a pretty awesome gig. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> fuck that up. I don't want to fuck that up. <laughs> yeah. So it's um it's one of those things where it's like yeah i mean you're raising you know and and developing life so that's like that's that's pretty fucking cool yeah (laughs) it's it's i don't know it is it is a great thing i'm very proud of it and it's like the most important thing to me so i guess i should stop thinking about all the extracurricular things i could be doing (laughs) And just focus my time and efforts on that. Yeah, I mean, like, trust me, there there are many times when, uh, especially like in, in the, well, I mean, just moving back to this area now that not that it's like, I mean, I grew up here, so I was I was very much aware of how Pennsylvania is and stuff. But there are very many times when I catch myself thinking, like, oh man, I I gave up that for this, but at the same time, it's like. It's very it's very easy to get complacent in an area where um, the weather is gorgeous, uh, sure. three hundred and sixty days a year. Maybe you get five days of just meh. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like so. But but how how are you going to develop? You know, um, what what kind of uh, you know? I, I I was always suspicious of people that never had to shovel snow or rake leaves. <laughs> You know, it's like, <laughs> you're, you're not it's angry. Like, Why are you not angry? <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> People are like, wow, the June and gloom. We got the overcast on the uh, the yeah. ocean today on the beach. It's like, yeah, we're at the beach though. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing too. Like when I think about, you know, it'd be cool to to do this and to do that because there's so many different perspectives. Like. I once was a host and a waiter at a restaurant before I started a full-time job. And that was one of the, I think, most important jobs that I ever had before my full-time job because that was an eye-opener. 
And I feel like almost everyone should have to be in the service industry in some yes. form. Yeah. Yeah. Because it teaches you a lot. It teaches you patience and it teaches you um, multitasking and, and all uh, a plethora of, of things that I can't think on off the top of my head right at the moment, but how to, how to deal with people and how to, Oh, you know, of course. Yeah. Just like, I mean, that was, I would recommend being that to anybody at least yeah. for a certain amount of time. I was a, I was a host um, for a time at uh, my neighborhood Chinese restaurant. And uh, it was this cool place where like, Again, you know, the clientele coming in is everyone from like, you know, your roommates, uh, you know, to just, yeah, Hollywood. Um, and uh, I was the host. And it was kind of funny because a lot of times, you know, I'm seeing people walking towards the door. I'm anticipating like how many are in the party. So I've got like a number of menus ready and stuff like that. And I welcome them and they're like, hi, do you work here? <laughs> it's like... Oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah it's, it's 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 being a host um is very much you're like the um because even when like you know your your servers and your bussers and your runners and stuff have their their positions but as a host i always looked at it as like all right i'm an extra set of eyes and ears and try and anticipate whatever needs might need to be met yeah, uh, yeah restaurants Playing Tetris, yeah. put all the pieces where they need to go. Need to go. But yeah. It's so funny. Uh, you got to change this name. <laughs> <laughs> I could just go by, uh, well, uh, all right, Girth Brooks it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I feel, I feel bad that I, not, not that I judge, but I was just like, oh, you know what? This could be goofy, but like you're, this it's, you know educated it's interesting diverse like you know intelligent person who like i said has like uh, a multiple of lives that you know you've, you've lived so far and um i want to get back to betty white devil because i you know the, the sure. music's good too and that's obviously part of your life um these songs and i, I mentioned earlier there's a, there's a few of them that, that kind of stood out when i was you know running through it um, you know, without a fight, wisdom and learning, are we in love in my mind? Um, can you talk about what um, those songs or uh, some of the songs and some of your writing is about in general? Yeah. Um, well, the one of my friends, he, he pointed out that I, uh, I write about uh, the ocean and trains a lot. Um, and just like, well, those were kind of, you know, environments that I was in. Um again like you know growing and developing as a as a person um songs like the ones you mentioned um i could i could think of moments that i sort of then extrapolated you know aspects from to to create a song or to at least start with an idea um because i mean i i, I as creative as I like to think I am, um, you know, I, I tend to write best when I have some type of uh, reaction, you know, to something. Um, but uh, I also then try to make it not so, you know, autobiographical, but at the same time, because, uh, you know, I, I have the same idea that I think a lot of uh, people do when it comes to creating something is you have your intention behind it, but then you put it out there and it's for whoever is going to, you know, ingest it. And then it's it's whatever they decide it is. It's well, that's that's it. Um, I mean, unless it's like. You know, blatantly wrong. I, I will say uh, that um, without a fight was an attempt to write. Um, it, it, and and wisdom and learning is another song where it's kind of like a nod to the uh, the alternative rock of the late '90s, early 2000s, with a little bit of the 
the pop punk influence. But um, I mean, yeah, a song like Wisdom and Learning is, it's not a very specific, uh, but the spirit of, of things that I've lived. And I, I think that's what a lot of the songs um, reflect also. Uh, the, the spirit of, of my experiences. So, yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's cool. I, I um, you just, uh, you came off a, a show recently at the Ritz. Yeah. Um, you know, was that the first time kind of playing these songs? I, I assume you played some of them. Um, uh, I'm not sure how long you've been, uh, Betty White Devil and, if you performed under that that name already, you know, last year or whatever, um, and is it a full band? Is or is it is it just you? Do you play a multitude of instruments? Like, how does that work? So for for the recording, um, I played, you know, the guitars, the bass, and like layered in the uh, the organs and the synths and stuff like that, and then had friends um, play play the drums. Um, uh, Jason Kraser that I, uh, that I met, uh, through actually, uh, through work, uh, he's a Dunmore guy. And, uh, then also, uh, Steve Warner from, uh, Young Virgo, yep. Rogue Pines and pretty much every, uh, every band that needs a drummer <laughs> seems to hire him. <laughs> so they, they help me round it out. But, um, yeah, I've been playing, um, these songs, yeah, since Betty White Devil's inception. And so, uh, like, my first show was in Philly. Um, uh, maybe in 2021. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I've been uh, I've, I've been playing these songs as a, a solo artist, but actually just recently um, put some feelers out to some musicians uh, to see what schedules are like to uh, get some full band shows uh in the future uh coming up uh in in march it looks like i'll have someone accompanying me uh actually uh another area musician uh jamie zaleski who i played with or i opened for uh saturday night his band uh southside bandits but he also is a singer and guitar player of a really fun reggae band called young lion yeah. um and so He's been uh, gradually, you know, learning some songs of mine um, to then kind of, okay, be able to do uh, some, add more texture to the songs, give them the, another, you know, a level up. But uh, yeah, for the most part, I've been, yeah, I, yeah, I've been playing these all solo, um, which is fun um, because I, I get to try, you know, to, uh, meet the the expectations of of maybe uh, people attending to see like a full band rock show, you know, because I'm still very much an opener, um, which I've got no problem with, you know, like it, it's it's fun trying to to win people over and show them like, hey, yeah, I've got an acoustic guitar and a harmonica, but like, you know, the, you're gonna hear something you like, I I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you have to do a full band. I think I think the yeah. people the people deserve it. We deserve it. Yeah, give us that full yeah. sound. I I kind of uh, I modeled it after like you know musicians that I um I grew up listening to like uh, you know like Elliot Smith or Connor Oberst and Bright Eyes uh, or Laura Jane Grace and Against Me where uh, they have like they they can do their full band thing, but then also they can pull off the uh, the solo acoustic sets um you know a lot of times so it's it it helps with uh flexibility and booking um because you know if people can't make it you know if, oh it's like oh well we were we got an offer in you know new jersey oh we can't all make it it's like all right well you know i, I can still make it um right. or and so yeah it's it's gonna be fun though we, we definitely have something cooking up uh in the kitchen for later on okay and uh what were your thoughts on the ritz oh i i was a i i had a blast uh it was the 
first time I think playing on yeah like a, a stage with that level of production like it was really cool they had the uh the album you know imagery in the background up on the big screen and stuff and uh had lights going um you know play venues that have you know uh sound text and stuff like that but this is uh this is definitely a fun experience and yeah the guys in uh modern ties they're really chill and uh Southside bandits i, I i'm actually I could, if there was still snow on the ground, I could throw snowballs at uh, multiple members of, of that band <laughs> who all live in the same neighborhood. So yeah, yeah was, it, was, it, was a, it was a good night. I was at the, I don't know, I think it might have been the first show since like Josh Balls and um, gosh, I can't remember his name. James, I think is his first name. Yeah, Alecki, I Alecki. believe is the last name. Yeah. Uh, so I was at the, Another day, Don show with Dustin Douglas and there's a uh, look back Luna. Another day, Don's Death Valley Dreams. Death Valley Dreams, yeah. So and Dustin Douglas, I missed all. I missed the first three or four openers. I'm, I got there. I'm like, who did I miss? And they're like, they're like everyone except for Another Day Don's. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So that was my first time there, and I feel like this is gonna be a problem because. And I saw the the show announcement with uh you know you guys you and Modern Ties and uh, Southside Bandits I'm like I want to go see that too, but like I said earlier I uh, wife and kids and I, there's a show that I was supposed to go to at the Jazz Cafe the same night I think it was, um the band I interviewed called Yam Yam, so like I want to go to all these things, <laughs> but it's like I can't go to all of them, and I also again like I like being home. Uh, so it's gonna be a problem in that it's a good problem. It's not, it's not, it's no one else's problem. It's my problem, but to have another venue, uh, in Scranton, uh, that will allow, you know, local artists to, to be able to do that is, is wonderful because prior to that, it was like the V spot, which also a great venue, but there weren't, Mm -hmm. there's not a lot of places. Yeah, it's, it's, it's For sure, a uh, a welcome addition, um, not only because, you know, like you said, like the V spot was one of the only local venues that had like in the city proper that had a stage and, and sound system. The Bog started last spring. Uh, they brought music back, which was that was a place that I remember going when I first turned 21, when I'd be back home in the area, like always catching, you know, some band coming through. Um, so I'll actually be playing there uh, at the end of March. Um, but yeah, like when I feel like when Tinks was around, that was very much a place where you could see local, regional, national world touring yeah. bands. Yeah. And uh, so hopefully um, if they, you know, if, if things keep progressing, uh, the Ritz will be that kind of venue where, you know, hopefully even when they have, you know, these big acts come through town, like if they are able to maybe carve out a little space for a local opener, you know, I know right. a lot of tours, they come and they have their, their openers and stuff like that. But if it's like, you know, if it's, if it's at all possible, I think that'd be really cool if uh, they still allowed for like a local opener kind of like uh, a lot of what I do and how I approach things with music, um, as far as the, uh, you know, the, uh, pounding the pavement aspect of things, I, I kind of draw from people I know, um, in the comedy world where, you know, uh, I feel like very few comedians that I knew and or still know, like are, they, they, they view the open mics as, yeah, I'm working out, I'm, I'm working something out and they'll hit multiple a night. And so you know, if my schedule allows, I'll still hit open mics. Um, and then when it comes to actual venues um, and tours and stuff, I know that like comedy clubs and venues uh, sometimes or oftentimes will allow for a local opener. You, mm-hmm. you know, I get it's different as far as like, you know, the amount of, uh, you know, stage production and stuff like that. But it'd well, be interesting I, if they, they did yeah, that. I, I think we're, you know, we're lucky that, you know, Josh Balls is a part of that, you know, he was in Motionless yeah. White, so he gets it, yeah. right? And he is such a, 
a promoter of NEPA and I, I he's said in countless interviews, you know, and even to me, um, that he wants this area to be an area that people want to come to, like, or, you know, not want to leave. Like he's, his mission is to like create a, a, this, this area, like as a, a positive thing is like anything else, people have their negative, you know, take on things. And sometimes that's louder than the positives, but, um, I think we're lucky to have him as part of the, the resurgence of the Ritz theater itself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember uh, seeing an interview with him not too long ago where he mentioned the idea of how um, back in the early part of the, uh, the 20th century, you know, the idea was that Scranton was a proven ground. Um, and so the, the phrase, if you can play Scranton or if you play Scranton, you know, can play, you know, elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, we were we were a test ground for a lot of you know shows that would then go on New York City, Chicago, all that kinds of thing. So yeah, yeah he, he's definitely a cool dude. I uh, very much I didn't get to interact with him too much, but I I, I know that uh, after he showed me where I'm supposed to go and stuff at one point when I saw that he wasn't running around and it looked like he had a moment, I did thank him for like you know in advance for what he's doing for the area. Uh, and what is going to hopefully become of of the Ritz Theater? Yeah, I hope I hope Wilkes-Barre uh, kind of takes notice too and starts. There's always for the longest time there's always this divide between Wilkes-Barre and Scranton. Like Pittston was like this uh, invisible curtain. Um, yeah, just people wouldn't cross that <laughs> that border, right? <laughs> the DMZ. <laughs> yeah, but now but now it's like there's a lot going on in Scranton. So if you want to do something and you have to go to Scranton, you know, the Ritz, the V spot, um, you know, Steve Masterson who once had stage West has a uh, mutant brewing company, which is a great spot. Bar Pazzo. Yeah. I um, believe uh, Steve was also the, uh, the promoter for the show on uh, this past Saturday night. I think you're right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and then back a few years ago, well, maybe a lot of time ago, like we had like Wilkes-Barre area had like a good scene too. And right now, mm-hmm. you know, back then we had I'm trying to think of different places. We had nightcaps. We have the River Street Jazz Cafe, which is still around and probably the only good venue to play in, you know, the Wilkes-Barre area. There was Cafe Metropolis, was a, a venue right. that I would go to often. Yeah. I got to play a couple times, which is now a uh, uh, barber shop and tattoo parlor. Uh-huh. Um, there was. Shoot, what was that called? It was well, the Voodoo there Lounge. There's a place called the Oh Voodoo Lounge. Yeah, I've heard yep. of that. Uh, home Base, I believe, but that may have been. I forget where Home Base was. I feel like that was by where Murray's was, but that's all torn down now. I think that's where that was. But a lot of venues, back in the day, and now there's like I said, I think the Jazz Cafe might be like the. Now, Carl Hall was a great spot with AJ John. Oh, going. That, yeah, yeah, that was. But unfortunately, yeah, that was that's very recent. That's no longer a thing. So it's like, yeah, you know, I hope that and it's one of those things too. If if you build it, they will come. And I, I hope that you know someone down in, in that area says, "Okay, Scranton's doing cool stuff. Like we can do it too." And just have people moving about, you know. The two, the yeah. two counties, you know. I know um, one place that's that's been gaining traction, um, at least from what I've I've seen and uh, I follow them online is uh, it's called Spacement Arts. Yes, Bob and um, yeah, and so that that seems like either even their their comedy night is really taking off. Uh, their comedy open mics, they they've yep. from what I've been hearing is like it's been a lot of like you know crammed people in there which is great because um you know that that was something that i enjoyed going to you know catch a a show or just an open mic just to be in the audience um it's yeah i mean it's always fun you got to give these kids something to do i mean you got the two colleges nearby you know it's like you know if you build it they will come and i feel like if you get people you know something to do they'll do it but you gotta do it right. You gotta you gotta advertise it. You gotta make people aware of it, right? Yeah, but, and 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 you know maybe we're 
I, I, I do like the amount of, of, uh, of life that we're seeing um, in resurgence. It, it seems as though we're still very much kind of getting back out there. Um, so hopefully more and more, you know, people will be, you know, dusting off the cobwebs, yeah. catching shows, showing the support that the, uh, the local scenes, whether it be music, comedy, um, theater, any kind of arts, you know, the support that they deserve. Yeah. It could be cool, man. It could be cool. Um, if you could have, if you can open for any artist, who that, who would that be? Uh, I, I would definitely, uh, it's, it's gotta be blink. I, yeah. I feel like, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I feel like the, the sounds would mesh well. Um, our humor would mesh well. Our flesh would mesh well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, them or, uh, who, uh, I think uh, hmm. also, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with them because I guess technically I've already played with the men singers, although I wouldn't pass up an opportunity to open for them because sure. you know, those guys are great. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say Blink is it would be number one for sure. What were your thoughts on their new album? I, I enjoyed it. Um, I, there's a lot of songs, a lot of songs mm -hmm. um, on it. And uh, I, I listened to it um, actually on my way back from, I played out in Gettysburg uh, a couple of times uh, this past year. Um, but one of the times, yeah, it was in, in the summer or was it in the summer? No, it was in the fall. Yeah, it came out in the fall. Yeah. So I listened to it on the way back. And um, I was like, oh, OK. And so in listening to that, I was like, oh, well, there's with the diversity of, of songs on that album, it kind of gave me the confidence for mine where I was like, oh, OK, well, they've got songs that, yeah, they sound like, you know, them. And then they also have like, you know, shows a new direction and then some other songs that are, you know, like one more time, you know, it's like the, you know, the slower song kind of thing. So I was like, OK. There's no reason that on my record I can't have um, a song like, yeah, Without a Fight, which is just, you know, straight up alternative pop punk or In My Mind, which is like the more singer songwriter aspect, or, or then even a song like um, The Nautilus, which has uh, like this electro pop drum loop kind of thing that I kind of feel very much was inspired by Phil Collins. <laughs> and that's one thing I, went, I meant to, to mention. Um... Yeah, the the uh, album is very um, diverse in that you have those different, uh, I don't say styles, but different uh, speeds. Yeah, maybe, but, you know? and 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 much like at least from what my impression was of the Blink album and, and other bands that do that, where like it's them, like you 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 still know it's them, even though it might be oh veering off to this style of song, it's still the spirit is still there, and that's what I trying and and hope and i think did come out with with uh uranus or mine um there are many times when i was recording and uh you know one session would be like okay here's like the singer songwriter stuff and then like another section is just like all right here's the more rock oriented stuff and then even another one would be like okay yeah let's <laughs> Let's get those harmonica tracks down, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, all right. Yeah, one thing that always bothers me about, you know, people when bands kind of uh you know come out with new records and kind of experiment, they're like, Oh, they they you know, they sold out or, or it doesn't sound like, you know, the last record. And it's like, these are artists. Like, how how dare you try and like tell them that to keep do this doing the same thing over and over again? Like they're supposed to take chances and create and do all these things like shut up yeah they're, they're the kind of people that i can imagine them being like oh mc escher i liked him better when he was doing his tessellations what are these impossible objects he's got going on you know, yeah. like, 
He's just like, just let, let the man paint. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, and that that new Blink album, like I, you know, yeah, you heard, you know, old early two thousands Blink. There was so a couple songs that sounded like Boxcar Racer, which I loved. Mm-hmm. Um, and one more time, obviously, such a simple song, but so powerful in like the message, you know. Yeah, yeah, especially like for people like you know that 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 follow the uh, the soap opera that is that yeah. band. Sometimes I hope that's you know I saw an interview they did with Zane Lowe and they they kind of said like this is like you know they're not going to fuck it up again. Um, but mm-hmm. I, mean, I hope they don't. I hope they I hope they found peace and they can continue living in harmony. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where uh yeah, I saw the same interview and like uh yeah, he it, it's like oh, mom and dad got back together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they've they've you know written songs about that. <laughs> yeah. So. so today's uh January 30th. I'm mean, only prefacing that because this is recorded and it, it'll be, be released in the next week or two. Um, in which case, you know, things you know may have changed, but we just came off of, um, I don't know if you follow sports, but uh, like a Super Sunday, like the uh, conference championships. We got the uh, mm-hmm. 49ers. They're going to face the Chiefs in the uh, Super Bowl in a couple of weeks, February 11th, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any any interest in sports and football? And uh, what's your take on Taylor Swift? Yeah, um, well, I was kind of bummed that um, the Ravens lost because uh, close family friends in Baltimore, many friends in Baltimore, but family friends, I mean, specifically, they, you know, uh, they're, they're hardcore and uh, – I like hardcore, and but like devout. And uh, I, I always try to, if, you know, I, because I went to school in the Philly area, I, I became, you know, uh, an Eagles fan and, and enjoy following them. Um, but I, if, you know, I don't have a dog in the fight, I, I try to go for someone that like, I at least know someone who has a connection to in some way. Um, so I was bummed about that. But um, yeah, I think, I think the Taylor Swift thing is great. I, I sort of wish um, that she would have maybe dated uh, a runner because uh, that's the, that's the sport that I follow most and uh, <laughs> there's no coverage of it and no right. one's interested in it. And I just can't help but think like, Oh, uh, you know, like, you know, maybe there's sprinters, throwers, jumpers, runners and stuff like, you know, if any one of them caught her attention, maybe, <laughs> They'd be like on Wednesday nights, they'd be like, yeah, here's this indoor track meet. <laughs> By the way, here's Taylor Swift. It's yeah. like, all right, cool. I'll take it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I wanted, I wanted the Lions to win. Just because they've never gone to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I actually watched football all day for the first time in probably three years. So I'm getting the games mixed up. The Lions played the Niners? I believe so. And I think the, right? the Chiefs played the, the Ravens. The Chiefs played the Ravens, yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch the games because I I remember, uh, let's see, this past Sunday, I was <laughs> I was just, I was, I was like sleeping and uh, just like kind of chilling out from, I was feeling a little under the weather, so I went to bed like really early. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I was I was worn out from Saturday night. Have you have you seen any of the um, the Taylor Swift information going around? The conspiracy theories that are happening. Uh, just like a, just a cursory glance of them, and in which like my position on a lot of conspiracy theories involving like like. With that one, it's like okay, so if if it's all rigged, I I would imagine like that would mean all the people that believe that's true would bet on the Chiefs, right? Did a bunch right. of people like you know bet the house and then like you know now they're uh, they've got that serious like fuck you money now or right. or like 
you know, because if they truly believe in it, then it's like, all right, it's, yeah, then bet on it. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know if, if we're thinking about the same one, but the, uh, that this is whole, this whole thing is, uh, yeah, this is all, you know, part of the plan. And then, you know, the Chiefs going to win the Super Bowl. And then Taylor Swift is going to endorse Joe Biden for president. I mean, she already pretty much uh, has. Uh, I, I remember seeing an interview, um, maybe not like it was like footage from a behind the scenes where she's having like this very sincere moment of, um, you know, talking about like some regrets about the last or like in, in like, you know, the 2016 era um, and talking about how she could have had a voice or, or, or a more assertive voice, but you know, because of, you know, protecting a brand. And now I think she's like, you know, just very much going to be doing things for, for her. I, I don't know if, uh, yeah, I, I can't, I couldn't even imagine, like she, she, she had already gotten so many people to register, you know, so that's great. You know, the more people participating in our, in our democracy, uh, the better. I mean, um, here in, in Scranton, we had a uh, an election not too long ago, this past November. I want to say 30% of the eligible voters turned out. And so if that's like, you know, on a local election, you know, that's it's kind of a bummer. But then like, yeah, the more people participating in a uh, in a larger, larger scale, like the better, more yeah. voices. Yeah, I think people just kind of fell out of, out of like um they don't trust the the process they don't trust either side so it's it's just like eh, you know what whatever happens it doesn't matter we're fucked either way yeah you know there, there's always like the uh hey i look at my, my friends that uh you know live in other countries uh like germany they've got a plethora of parties you know mm-hmm there's nothing, nothing wrong with having a couple more parties to attend. <laughs> yeah, what else? I saw another one. Something about um, something about. I'm trying. I'm trying to like watch it now when I'm listening, like talking to you. But like her catalog was bought by a a, a group of people, Scooter Braun. Yeah, that's why she's uh, re-releasing all of her albums. Uh, there was this whole thing where. Uh, the the masters uh, were, were some kind of deal gone raw awry or someone went behind uh, yeah the uh, her back or so and uh, yeah purchased her her catalog that's why we're getting all these re releases yeah it's kind of neat it is neat yeah and then it's, it's funny because um, uh, Kelsey is like this big uh, Bud Light guy, I like Bud Light, so I'm not talking shit. But Bud Light is a big, um, you know, he's pro vax. Well, that's a big thing now. It's just so much, just so much to try and pay attention to. Yeah, I. Uh, that's why I like I like news wires. You know, it's yeah. uh, it kind of. But then again, you know, I, I I'm definitely chronically online and planted firmly. <laughs> in reddit <laughs> who do you, it's like who do you believe though it's like this crazy like world it's like i, I never know what what i'm what i'm reading what's real what's fake and what's a lie and i, I, I usually go by like if if something gets it like if if i feel something um i'm gonna again i, I it's probably because i also have like a like what i refer to as like my idiot focus every now and then we're like if, if something like catches my attention i'm gonna read a bunch of articles about it <laughs> and just and from like many different sources just to be like all right well the commonality is this right and so all right so it's like uh okay <laughs> you know and then the next day totally forget <laughs> uh, i don't know it's like follow the money there's too much money there's too much power and money it's just like i don't know that's a that's a discussion for a different day 
but yeah we it's, it's fun because at the uh, at the fire i mean we're, we're there 24 hours and so you know we we can i'm pretty sure like before the uh, the first pot of coffee is finished you know just before 7 a.m we've we've just discussed and solved multiple world problems but then all <laughs> of a sudden it's like all right what are we, oh <laughs> all right first run of the day there we go yeah. <laughs> what's the craziest thing you've seen as a firefighter um it, it's all like i guess like normal in the sense like you know there's there's medical issues accidents fires things like that um I, we do rescue cats that is a thing um there <laughs> there have even been stories uh i personally haven't been on them but i've i've heard of people um rescuing iguanas um like plural like at different times over the years it seems as though uh many pet iguanas in the area have uh, escaped and uh people will call and say like oh there's an iguana stuck in the tree and like whenever i hear like the idea of like all right there's an iguana stuck in a tree like you know where iguanas live right, right. <laughs> like that that thing's not stuck right <laughs> you just might suck as an <laughs> owner <laughs> those are yeah. probably the good calls to get though right oh yeah 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 there's it's oh th like recently we got to read books to uh to kids at the children's library um that was really fun. Uh, love doing the uh, like the the fire prevention month presentations and stuff at like elementary schools. Uh, that's that's always fun because like by like we'll go to a school and we'll have so many classes uh, for that for that day. Um, and by like the third class, like we we've, we've really got it down tight to where like we were like, all right, that joke worked. We're keeping that at that point. I'll set you up like that. And okay, yeah, that other line, like it's it's not really hitting the way we had hoped. So let's just cut that. And it's just very much like, uh, you know, putting on a show. Uh, and uh, it's 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 fun because yeah, the, the you know, I always <laughs> I was all amped up like asking like, all right, who's your favorite member of the Paw Patrol? Expect. Uh, Expecting them to say like you know Marshall, but they're all like, uh, <laughs> they're like I'm like, eh, who's your favorite member of the Paw Patrol? And like they're all like Sky. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> no. All right. Right. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Who's your second favorite? Like, is his name Rubble? Rubble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, they're like Rubble. One more I'm time. Like, all right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Please just say Marshall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's cool though. Yeah. It's 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 a good gig. That's sweet. Well, I mean, you know, thank you for doing that. It's obviously a very important part of uh, society and, you know, serving and protecting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's been interesting and fulfilling. And then, yeah, we all like, you know, thank you for the support. We always, uh, you know, we're just out there trying to do our uh, friendly neighborhood fire station thing. Yeah. Fire are crazy. I can't imagine going into one. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> it's uh, I mean, like you know, you, you've got the training, sure. Yeah, you know? so but like still. it's like, but still, but yeah, it, it's there are times when you're like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I need to be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like uh, when you're in a in a room and uh, you can't see your hand in front of your face because it's all just smoked up. And so we have these infrared cameras um, that help us, you know, uh, guide ourselves through as best we can. And you see like this glowing and then all of a sudden it's very bright glowing and you're like, ah, yes, fire. <laughs> yeah. I never really thought about it. It was probably like the, the technological advancements have probably uh come into play like quite a bit right yeah yeah like w when i first got on it was the officer that had this like large handheld uh camera and now in the in the in the years since uh we each have on our packs smaller ones so we could you know trace heat signatures and uh stuff like that to be able to you know there's something in the wall or if there's a 
drastic difference in temperature between like, you know, that section and that section, you see it, you know, increase and you're like, all right, they're, they're chase, you got to open up that wall right there and, you know, chase the fire throughout the house kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. And that's a fun thing to show the kids. Um, you know, cause like when you, when you shine it on your face, like depending on what setting you have it on, it's like, all right, any of you kids see the movie predator? No. All right. Well, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> you kids suck. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, don't you let your parents, they actually, you know, they don't want you. All right. Well, <laughs> got, got the wrong Paw Patrol characters. You never saw a cool movie. What is happening? Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. So uh we'll get back to Betty White Devil, then we'll wrap things up. I'm sure you have to sure. get some sleep. But um I know you kind of touched on a little bit, but um, you know, it is January. It's almost the, the last day of January. Uh what do you have planned for the 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 music in twenty twenty four? Anything as far as big shows coming up? Uh can we expect any more new music? Uh what are we looking at? Well, um Cynthia, like uh, I'll be playing a um, couple times a month now through like I'm just hearing back more and more dates for the summer. But, um, you know, next week or no, uh, second week of February, I'll be in New York City playing. Uh, then at the end of February, playing up in Cambridge, Boston area. Uh, then, yeah, in, in March, I'll be back playing in this area. Um, you know, the, the 27th at the bog is, is one to definitely check out because, uh, as it is right now, Jamie will be, uh, accompanying me and we've got some fun stuff that we've been cooking up, but yeah, traveling, uh, yeah, to, um, a couple nights in a row at a couple venues out in like central and Western PA Gettysburg area, uh, going to do, yeah, more Philly area, just, um, playing at, uh, as it is at least twice a month. Um, cool. And then uh, as far as new music goes, um, I definitely have material that I'm, I'm writing and working on. Um, just a matter of, you know, kind of just demoing them for a while. I'll probably uh, just to keep things um, fresh for myself in remembering how to work the software and like, yeah, uh, <laughs> probably uh demo a couple things maybe this summer maybe put them out but for the most part it's uh yeah just playing the stuff on the uh the album and then uh you know some fun covers along the way very cool well betty white devil album's called uranus or mine <laughs> doesn't suck saying that that's funny <laughs> but uh i guess all these dates are on social media or your website yeah yeah the uh, the instagram is the uh the area that i'm i'm most uh or the platform that i'm most uh active on and so all those dates will be on there and they're gradually added and you know subtracted as i play them and stuff like that so yeah definitely check out the instagram um the music's on spotify and i think every other um music platform there is out there very cool well dj david james baker betty white devil hopefully i'll see you playing out soon i've got a, a new uh a new a new album to kind of uh keep listening to and and find more uh songs i like on it because like i said it's it's um it was not what i expected and uh i was nice. pleasantly surprised and and uh it's great songs. So anyone watching, listening, check it out. He said there's it's on Spotify, probably Apple, iTunes, and all, all that kind of shit. So check it out. Betty White Devil. Check the dates on Instagram. And hopefully I'll see you soon, man. All righty. Yeah. Hope to see you out there. Cool, man. Thanks. All right. You have a great night. You too. See ya. Yeah.